Hello and welcome to Early Teens. I'm Pastor Tim and I'm the guy that's been running the place for I'd say probably 12 years now. Um, <laughs> we have a fantastic team but unfortunately this year you're not going to get to meet everyone but you will meet my best friend Brandon Ford, Pastor Brandon Ford. Uh, he's been there the last year that we were at Junaluska and he's going to share some things that have happened in his life. Uh, He's been over some territory. Uh, he knows a little bit about the challenges of growing up in this world. And he's going to give you some things that will give you some encouragement. So, glad you're here. We're not going to get to do the silly songs and uh, go rafting and all the fun things. But this will still be worth your time and energy to come and, and listen uh, and learn and grow. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you face to face soon. Hello, my name is Allison, and I'm in 11th grade. Hi, I'm Markela, and I'm in 10th grade. Hi, my name is Jesus, and I'm in 11th grade. Hi, my name is Grace, and I'm in 10th grade. So the thing that I've enjoyed most about being on campus is the really fun atmosphere. Um, you're surrounded with your friends all the time, and everyone just really knows each other really well. The campus experience has affected me in the way that um, I feel that I appreciate the little things more. I've really enjoyed being around people since it's a small school. It's easy to make friends and also get close to the staff. It's obvious that the faculty really care about the students. I feel that they're kind and understanding and always there if you need to talk to them. Since there's not a lot of students, it's easy to get close to the staff and if I need any help, I can just go to them and they will set up a time to help me with homeworks or any assignments that I miss. The classes have definitely prepared me for what I want to do in life since I want to go into sciences or something related to that. Um, biology and earth science have helped me learn more about it and see, like, confirm that I want to go in there. I like living in the dorm mainly due to the fact that my friends are also in the dorm. I think that um, here on campus people are really willing to help each other out as much as they can and I've really appreciated that. Um, being here on campus has definitely made me a lot more responsible, uh, like doing laundry or getting my homework done. The classes have been pretty fun. They're always a little different every single day and the different learning styles are always appreciated since I learned different ways and at different times. What I like most about the intramural sports are that they're competitive, but they're also really fun at the same time. I'm part of yearbook and acro. I, I really enjoy going to yearbook and signing the yearbook pages. Also enjoy going to acro and doing the routines. This way that my relationship with God has grown while being at MPA is through my friends. I think it's obvious that Jesus is a big part of their lives and that really inspires me. Since coming to MPA, my relationship with God has gotten a lot stronger. I've learned who God is to me and that to have a good relationship with Him, I had to put in part and just stay close to Him. I really like service day. I think it just gives me a chance to help the community and show people about God and at the same time get closer to my class. They give me time to do community service that I would like to do that I wouldn't be able to do on my own time. Wherever we go it's a very warm atmosphere and they always are very encouraging and always have something for us to do. The campus is really pretty. I like how secluded it is from the rest of like the world at times. We don't have like a lot of traffic going in and out and it's always quiet. So I really like the campus here. Um, I think it's very unique, but I think that it's pretty. I really like the mountain view. Um, I can see it from my room and it really makes me happy. Hello friends, my name is Pastor Brandon, I pastor here in Boone, North Carolina, and this week we have the awesome opportunity 
to study the great controversy, this battle between Christ and Satan, and we are stuck in the middle of it. And it's my prayer, it's my hope this week that God would open our eyes to the reality of this great controversy. And not only that he would open our eyes, but he'd give us his strength, power, and courage to fight alongside Jesus every day of our lives. We're going to start with a word of prayer and get into our devotional thought this evening. Will you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for life. We thank you for our families, our friends. We thank you for this virtual camp meeting that we can study your word. In Jesus' name, we ask that you lead us and guide us in all truth as you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to start with Psalm 34. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 34. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. Psalm 34, 1 through 8. The happiness of those who trust in God. A psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. And that's the subtitle here. Verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Here's the big verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Taste, taste and see that God is good. We're going to be focusing this evening on tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. So what does the word taste make you think of? Food, right? That makes you think of food. How many of you like food? Food excites me. I bet I like it more than you. But did you know that Jesus, or in the Bible, we see food in a parallel with God quite often here. And so Jesus said about himself, I am the bread of life. And, you know, God tastes better than any physical food. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by Satan, when Satan told him, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread, and Matthew 4, 4, we see Jesus' response. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And, you know, quality of food. What do you like to eat? Do you just, do you like to eat ramen noodles? Or, I know those are tasty, but they're not too nutritious. If you didn't know, I'm sure you did. But quality of food is super important. Uh, do you believe the saying, you are what you eat? Have you heard that before? If you're eating a bunch of ramen noodles, you are ramen noodles, basically. <laughs> and, you know, I think this saying, you are what you eat, is a biblical concept. Not even just in eating, but look at uh, Matthew 6, 21 through 23. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? So we know quality of food is important. We like food. Um, how often do we need to eat food? How often? <laughs> uh, some of you probably eat 10 times a day, you know, but mainly three times is probably the average, three to five times a day. Most people would eat. But what would happen if we only ate sometimes, once a week? We would become weak, we'd become too skinny and tired and develop some kind of disease or even die. So, in talking about, we see all these parallels with food and God. We see that we eat every day, we need to, or we die. And 
And the Bible is showing this parallel of our relationship with God and our need to eat physical food. And so I think God is trying to get us to understand that we need to talk to him. We need to eat spiritual food every day. But is it really that important to taste God every day? Listen to what the Bible says about tasting God daily. Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread. What about Psalm 68, 19? The Lord deserves praise day after day. He carries our burden, the God who delivers us. Luke 9, 23, then he said to them all, if anyone wants to become my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And don't you agree that we need to taste and we need to see that the Lord is good every day, every day. So we are refreshed, renewed, excited to share him with others. Uh, my grandmother, we call her Nana. I'll tell you a story about her. I was eating guacamole one day and she's big on texture and the way food looks. She does not trust her sight or no, she trusts her sight too much. So I was eating guacamole with chips and I said, Nana, you have to try this because guacamole is awesome. If you haven't tried it, you need to try it. Um, I tried convincing her and she said, no, I don't like it. And I said, Nana, have you tried it? And she said, no, but I know I won't like it. It's green and it, it's mushy. And, but I mean, when we try some good food or, or something we like, whether it's a sport or hobby, and we say, try it, you know, we try to share it with our friends, with our family. But my Nana said, no, no, no. And God wants us, or we see the same experience that David had when he says, taste and see, try the Lord, taste and see that God is good. And that, that's kind of the concept we're looking at in Psalm 34. You know, the promises of God turns life from tasting sour because we all experience sourness in our lives. Um, but the promises of God turn that sourness into something so sweet. And he wants to show us his incredible love. He wants to show us his wonders. And he is holding the fork in front of our mouths. But we still have the responsibility to open our mouths and taste and see that the Lord is good. I would like to now tell you, you guys, how I have tasted and seen that God is good. I would like to tell you, uh, in summary, my story of how God has changed my life. And I'm going to be sharing several stories, Some, a lot of them being in an in a old lifestyle I was in. But I share them to show you how God was grabbing my attention throughout my teenage years. So I grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church and um, zero to 12 years old. I was good, good kid, I would like to think, you know, I was Pathfinder and I got up front and sang and stuff. And um, I was well behaved, I thought, and I was baptized at age 10. I told my mother I wanted to be a youth pastor when I got older. And I want to, if you have your Bibles, will you go to, Ezekiel 36. And this is the text we're going to stand throughout the story I'm telling you. Ezekiel 36, 17 and 20. This chapter just really um, feels very personal. Then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I, I the Lord have spoken it and I will do it. Thus says the Lord God, I will also let the house of Israel inquire me, inquire of me to do this for them. I will increase their men like a flock. And look at verse 17 and verse 20. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways and deeds. To me, their way was like the uncleanness of a woman and her customary impurity. Verse 18, therefore, or sorry, verse 20, rather. When they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said of them, these are the people of the Lord, 
and yet they have gone out of his hand of his land. Sorry. Okay, so these scriptures are showing the children of Israel profaning the name of the Lord wherever they went, though they carried his name. And, you know, when I turned 13 and 13 through 18 years old, I started to hang out with the wrong crowd. It wasn't cool to follow Jesus. And I got into some, so with these friends that didn't really go to church, um, I was friends with them and they were into darker video games, like horror type video games. And it just grew darker and darker. And my, um, my time was spent with those things. And I, I was involved in school with, I started to steal with these kids that were stealing in, in high school. And I got, with that came the drugs and some friends of mine were doing drugs. They introduced drugs to me. And I remember one time I hid these, some paraphernalia, some drug material in my closet in my room. And my dad found it one day and he called me into the room and he sat me down and I saw the paraphernalia that he found. And he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said, I failed raising you, is what he said. And that brought tears to my eyes. And I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, no, you didn't. And but time went on and I was still hanging out with those friends. I started going to parties around age 16, 17, going to these parties with the drugs and everything. And I... One time, there was this woman I didn't know at all, and we were in conversation, and she, I was talking like a sailor, I was not talking about God at all, and she looked at me, and out of the blue, she said, you're going to be a pastor one day, and this woman didn't know me, and I looked at her, and I, I literally dropped to my knees there, and I said, you don't even know me? And you, you said, I'm going to be a pastor. My mom has always told me I'm going to be a pastor growing up. And I, I knew God was speaking to me even through this experience. My friends that I was hanging out at that time listened to death metal music. And if you don't know what that is, it's like screaming along with some metal instruments, heavy guitar and drums and... Um, I got into that, I joined a band, and I was the vocalist of this band. And one time in our band practice upstairs, I was, we were practicing, my dad was making spaghetti downstairs, and I was screaming the name of Satan through the microphone, through a band practice. And so I didn't think my dad could hear me, and I don't know why I was screaming the name of Satan, but he came upstairs and he opened the door as I was screaming allegiance, if you will, to Satan. And he said, the food is ready. And I saw the greatest disappointment once again in my dad's eyes. And this experience kind of tugged at my heart that I needed to make some kind of change. I needed some kind of help. And you know, at the same time, my mother, she was praying for me. I, she was going to the prayer meeting every week. She was praying earnestly for me. She would get home. She would ask me about my days. She would tell me about Jesus. She would show me the love of Jesus more than anything. And I saw her faith. And this tugged at my heart. And I remember one day I came home with a, from a party and my mom, she had some kind of authority in her, in her face. And when I walked in, she said, sit down. And usually I would talk back to her and I would make fun of her and go on, but she had some kind of authority and it was the authority of the Holy Spirit. And so I listened to her, I sat down and she said, take off that belt because I had this huge um, devilish skull looking belt buckle on. And she told me to take it off and I did. And um, she places her hand on my head and she says, in the name of Jesus, get out of him, Satan. And at the time, I was kind of mocking her. You think I'm possessed and all this stuff? And I think I was. But I saw her authority, her faith. 
I listened to what she was telling me to do, and it was because of the Holy Spirit and the authority of the name of Jesus. And, you know, I turned 18, and I remember on my 18th birthday, I was coming back from a long road trip, and um, a pastor called me and said, Brandon, happy birthday. Jesus loves you, and he just wanted to pray with me. And I just listened to him over the phone. But that night, as I turned 18, my mindset was, my parents can't hold me back. I'm an adult now. I was thinking all this stuff. And so that night, I went out partying. I stayed up all, all night. I didn't get any sleep. And the next day, I had to drive a couple of hours. And I fell asleep at the wheel on my 18th birthday. And um, I swerved into the other lane and had a head-on collision with another, with a van going 55 each way, and my truck tipped over, and I woke up when the truck was upside down, and I unbuckled the seatbelt. I got out with hardly any damage. I had a gash on my head, and I had a gash on my arm, and the lady in the van had a couple broken bones. And I went to the hospital, but looking at the truck and how smashed up it was, um, people were telling me that angels protected me. And looking at that, that truck, I knew that was the case with no, I was walking the next day. I didn't stay in the hospital. It was a miracle, really. Looking at verse 21 through 25 of, of Ezekiel 36 now. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations wherever they went. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord, when I am hollowed in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Every time the phrase house of Israel. I'm inserting my own name there, Brandon, because this was totally my experience. So up to this point in the story, I was 19 years old. I was depressed. I was thirsty for life. And, you know, I wanted more life. I, I didn't, I couldn't find it. I was every day seeking the same things and I couldn't find life. So I remember taking the dusty Bible off my shelf, I wiped the dust off, and I opened it, and I got on my knees, and I said, God, if you're there, if you're real, Lord, I'm ready. Show me who you are. I'm tired of living this way. It's not fulfilling me. It's not bringing joy to my life. If you're there, if you're real, if you care, God, please show yourself to me. And I opened the Bible randomly, and it landed in the book of Proverbs. And if it's the wisest book in the Bible, and I remember reading it, and it would say, the wise man does this, the foolish man, Brandon, basically, would does this. And every time it said the fool, I was the fool, and I, could, I just knew it. And it hurt my, it wasn't hurting, it was cutting into my heart, but it felt good, it felt whole. I was actually content and happy reading the Bible. Something was taking place, something was changing. And, you know, I tried reading the Bible in the day and going to parties at night, but I saw those two things weren't mixing well because I would end up getting in fights and um, from just telling people about God at the parties and they would call me a hypocrite and I probably was there, but I was definitely searching for God. So I knew I needed to get away from my old friends. And so I moved to my grandparents' place in Alabama for the purpose of studying the Bible, and I stayed there for about two and a half months, and I studied the Bible every single morning, and then in the evenings, an evangelistic series started. So I went to all these revelation seminars that happened to start um, 
at the same time that I got there. And so now look at Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. It says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. The preacher made a call for baptism after the two months of studying, and I, I was already talking about it, I was thinking about baptism, I was absolutely ready more than anything, and I jumped out of my pew and I went up front real quick, uh, making the decision to be rebaptized and follow God, and since then, that was eight years ago, since then I then went to Southern and I knew that there was nothing else that made me happy in life except for studying the Bible, learning of God. And so I started to study theology, and he called me to pastoral ministry. And I've seen the Lord do miracles in my life and in the lives of those around me. And that's just one story of, you know, in summary of how I have tasted and seen that God is good. But my question to you, my friend, tonight is, have you tasted, have you seen that God is good? Have you had the personal connection with Him? I don't know where you are at, where you're at in life. I don't know what you face this week or what you will be facing very soon, but I do know that Jesus wants to help you through your trials. I know that Jesus desires a personal relationship with you. He wants to give you joy and the abundant life and he wants you to know him more and so that is my prayer this week if it's your desire to taste and see that God is good every day this week I invite you to pray with me right now father in heaven you truly are good you taste better than anything in the world the devil tempts and throws lies of what should taste good but it's not healthy and it never leads to satisfaction. It leaves us empty and wanting. But Lord, a relationship with you is like nothing else. You surely fill us with the abundant life. And I pray that this would be our very experience. Each one listening. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Have a wonderful night, my friends. And tomorrow evening we'll be looking at an overview of how this whole great controversy has started.